another day another problem so let's solve it hello guys i hope everything is going well for you all so today's this video we're gonna solve the problem zigzag conversion i think this problem it's not likable by people as we can see that they have like 10k dislike so we're gonna solve it uh so let's read the problem the string paper is hiring is writing on a zigzag patterns on a given numbers of row like this so the string is bipel is hiring is writing in a zigzag bar and we have a number of row which is three in this first example so the idea here is that the first character is gonna be this and the second character is gonna be this and at the last row it's gonna be like this so the approach to solve this problem we need first to know how many steps we're gonna jump to read the second letter if you look closely to this picture i have added indices of each characters so that you can see what I try to explain. You will find that if, you, if you're gonna go to the last character at the first column and go back to the first character in the first column, you will need four steps. Row. So to get to the next letter in first row, we need to apply the same logic. The difference is that we're gonna not return to the first character in the first column, but we're gonna switch the direction to the next letter in row, as we know we have a zigzag, so we can get the first letter. But things get harder when we try to read the second row. So to read the second row, we're gonna reduce the step by two, because let's say we're gonna read the letter P. How many steps we're gonna need? One and two. So if we do the ba basic calculation, the difference between the first row and second row is to each time we read a letter. For the last row, it's gonna be just like the first row. We're gonna need four steps, the same step. And if we only have one row, we're gonna return the input string. So for the code explanation, the first thing we're gonna do is the basic condition. If the input string is equal to none or the number of rows is less than zero, we return And also we need to return the input string if you only have one row. And after that we initialize a result string that can hold the final result string. And we also declare a variable that's gonna hold the steps that we're gonna jump to get the next letter. And we start looping for each row. After that we're gonna start looping at each character and string with the step that we're gonna jump to get to the second letter. After that, we're gonna add the first letter to the first string and we're gonna jump four steps to read the next letter and add it to the result string. This condition is for the first row and the last row. So for the second row, we're gonna check if we are at the second row first things and we're gonna reduce the number of steps to two because the first row and the last row takes four steps to read the second letter. But for the second row, as we say, we reduce the steps by two. 